Hello everyone! It's time to take a trip back to the 90s and check out these funky Packard Bell Towers. These are known as designer towers. Since I only have two of them, we're also going to be checking out this multimedia CM115A desktop. Alright well, let's tear into these. Starting with the Platinum 2240. This case is in reasonably good condition. We just have a few scuffs here and there. A little bit of plastic damage there. But Packard Bell actually used some pretty high quality plastic that resists yellowing really well. Who would have ever guessed? And in case you're wondering, yes, this tower is really hard to tip over. That wide base makes it almost untippable. So there's some utility to this design. And we are badged as an Intel Pentium 1 with MMX technology. And here's the back of the machine. And now the oddities become even more apparent. See, unlike the towers that we're used to, this one has the motherboard in the desktop orientation. <laughs> that is so funny. I see we have a combo sound card slash dial-up modem there. And I'm kind of surprised to see USB on this thing. I guess this machine is later than I thought. I don't see any obvious date codes on either of those stickers. Okay, well, let's get this thing open. But first I have to figure out how. It's not terribly obvious. Although somebody's already removed the screws, I see. Hopefully that doesn't mean bad things. And I just now noticed this thing is sitting funny. It's leaning towards the front. That means we're missing rubber feet. Yep, front ones are gone. That's okay, at least they're just the regular rubber ones. Okay, now I'm gonna start with just trying to slide this back. I've never actually opened one of these before, and that's not going well. Let's see if I can use this chip lifter tool to try to coax it into opening. Aha, now we're getting somewhere. Yeah. Okay, I don't see a hard drive, unless it mounts to the other side. Oh, it does. Let's spin this thing around. Yeah, there it is. Looks like a quantum fireball. All right, so this system looks complete. And I'm glad to see that looks like a standard AT power supply. I was kind of worried they'd pull some proprietary crap in this weird case. And I see we have a peripheral card blank in there, just sitting on the motherboard. Yeah, that could have been bad. <laughs> and this is the most awkward thing I've had on this tower stand yet. But hey, it works. Okay, let's check out this dial up modem slash sound card. Let's get that CD audio cable disconnected. And that is an Aztec card. Sure is hard to read that chip. And that would be an AZT2320 with built-in OPL. I wonder if that's real OPL or some kind of emulation. But it seems like Packard Bell always found a way to include OPL sound. And the back side of the board is fairly clean. But we do have some residue on here. Looks like that might be flux or something. Let's put that to the side. Let's start getting this stuff disconnected. Had to flip it around to the other side. Okay, that motherboard power connector looks impossible to get to, so I guess that motherboard tray must slide out somehow. But how is not exactly clear. I'm guessing this back plastic should come off first. Let's see if we can get that done without a catastrophe. Okay, that wasn't so bad, but I don't think that got us very far in terms of removing the motherboard. However, that power supply looks kind of funny. Does that look like soot to you? It could just be very fine dust. Okay, now these side panels must come off, because they're definitely not riveted. Yeah, I see what looks like a screw down there. So this plastic must come off. Let's get to work on removing that. Okay, something else is holding this on. Had to put this thing on its back. This thing's kind of awkward to work on. I'm guessing the presence of that pry mark means we should start there. Okay, that didn't sound good. Looks like we're free. And surprisingly, not a single one of those clips broke. And man, this thing is dusty. Okay, now I can get to that screw. There we go. And we are fully populated with 72 pin SIM RAM. It must be EDO. Looks like all those sticks are identical. And they're all double sided, so they're probably 8 meg sticks. If so, that gives us a total of 32 megs of RAM in this thing. Let's pull that first one out. I like how it has these nice metal clips that don't tend to break as easily. And that stick is made by PNY. No obvious indication of size or speed, as was the style of the time. And all the rest of these are definitely identical. And indeed they are. A matched set of four. That is a beautiful thing. And while we're on this side, we might as well get that hard drive out of there. 
and so we just have a single screw over here and then this must do a slidey thing yeah there we go okay now let's get this size rocker panel off so we can more easily access that cpu that fan seems like a survivor and this is kind of awkward Wow, they actually use thermal paste. My hat is off. Let's clean that CPU up. Now let's get it out of there. And as promised, that's an Intel Pentium 1 with MMX Tech. And all the pins look okay. And that's an SY060. I think that's a later revision of the first stepping. And that puts the clock speed at 200 megahertz. Let's put that to the side. Now, I'm noticing a lot of the screws in this motherboard are missing, and one of them's rolling around in here. So, somebody's been rooting around. And onboard video is provided by an S3 Verge, the classic 3D decelerator. Say, how dead do you think that battery is? If you guessed super incredibly dead, congratulations, you win! Though it's honestly not as dead as I thought it was going to be. We still got a quarter of a volt there. But that just will not do. Now, let's clean that heatsink up. Now, I don't trust this metal shim because it has a perished thermal pad underneath. So let's try to get it off. You know, these things usually come off more easily. Gonna have to try something a little more fierce than the guitar pick. There we go. Yeah, this is why I didn't trust this stuff. Well, that's as clean as this thing's getting. I have been scrubbing it like there's no tomorrow. But at least we're down to just a stain. That's not actually raised up anywhere. It should be fine. Okay, now let's see what that fan sounds like. Okay, not too bad. I think this fan just needs a cleaning. So let's do that. And boy does it ever need a cleaning. And that's more like it. Okay, this motherboard and this case in general is pretty grimy. So I'm going to go ahead and pull that motherboard out so we can more easily clean it. So let's get that front panel disconnected. Now let's get this riser out of here. Looks like two screws get rid of that. And at least the riser itself is pretty clean. Guess that's the benefit of being vertical in this system. Okay, now I think that's all the screws. Yep. Now just to minimize the amount of dust that goes in that ZIF socket, I'm going to get the CPU back in there. Now let's just get this thing cleaned up with an anti-static brush. Now let's get that CPU dressed. And we may as well get this RAM back in while we have easy access. Okay, now we have to deface this thing. Looks like there's just two screws, one on each side. So let's get those out of there. Okay, now, does this just pull off? Nah, it looks like we have to release the clips on the top first. There we go. Now, it looks like this CD drive is on rails, and we have to squeeze these tabs together, one on each side. Pull that out of there. Well, that was nice and easy. And the floppy drive is just held in with screws. I got those out, so... Yoink! And that floppy drive is just a regular Mitsumi D359T5. Though that's probably a Packard Bell specific eject button. Let's clean this thing up. Yeah, pretty dusty in here. Now let's get this door off so we can more easily clean it. Now let's clean those heads. Not bad, not bad. Now we'll grease the lead screw. Okay, let's get that door back on. And that CD drive is made by Memorex, but we already knew that. It's a 36-speed drive, manufactured April 1998. And that hard drive is indeed a quantum fireball. Looks like three gigabytes. Let's hope it works. Well, somebody looks happy about something. All right, let's sweep this nasty thing out. This machine spent a lot of hours in a nasty environment. And this power supply seems decent enough so far. Made by Light On. It is incredibly dusty though, so I do want to take it apart and clean it. I also want to have a look inside and make sure nothing burned. 
Okay, yeah, this thing's just dusty. No big deal. Looks like it's a decent quality power supply. We got nice beefy transformers and heat sinks. The only potential trouble spot might be this glue here. That stuff is notorious for absorbing moisture and becoming conductive, but we can at least test for that. Just get the meter in resistance mode and just probe around the glue. And this stuff is fine. Okay, let's knock this dust off and test this thing. Okay, let's see what this thing does. Got two sacrificial hard drives and a light bulb. Here we go. All right, so far so good. Let's move that bulb to the five volt rail. All right, everything's behaving like it should so far. Let's give it five minutes. And five smoke-free minutes later, that thing's good. Okay, I've got this thing mostly back together, and now it's time to test. Let's see what we get. And we're already posting. Hard drive sounds good, and is detected. And of course, we have no CMOS settings. Let's just continue for now. And <laughs> it's got Windows 98 on it. Honestly, I love the way Quantum Fireballs sound. Alright, we are in! <laughs> and they got AOL on it. Gotta open that up. And yeah, they were definitely using it. Got two accounts on here. Let's see if they have any favorites. Yeah, they got a few. You don't know how bad I just want to log on and play Slingo. All right, let's get out of here. They also had MSN Messenger. Let's see if they were using that. Might've been just something Microsoft snuck in. Click here to sign in. And yeah, they were using it. Cool. Okay. Let's see what else we have on here. Not a whole lot. Let's see what's in that StarCraft folder. It appears to be StarCraft. Let's see if it actually runs. Nope. Need the CD. Oh well. Let's see what was in that Sierra folder. It's a bunch of demos. That's interesting. Ah, uh, they really have real player on it? <laughs> of course I gotta open real player. And they never registered it. For shame. Oh no, my player is out of date. <laughs> that just looks so 90s. Update now, free. All right, let's get out of here. What else is there? iMagic Games, whatever cam is. Knights and Merchants. I have never heard of that. Let's see if it runs. And that's a no. Forgot everything required a CD back then. Because we barely had hard drive space. Speaking of which, let's see what that drive space situation is. Yeah, we're a little under half full. Not too bad. Let's see what's on the root of that drive. What is Rebel 2? Uh, okay, I have no idea what that is. Let's see if it runs. Nope. Must be some kind of game, probably. What is Cave Dog? Apparently it's gone. Alright. Thought I saw Duke 3D on there. Yes, I did. Yeah, you know I gotta play that. Let's see how it runs on here. No sound. Let's just see what the frame rate's like. Yeah, not too bad. My capture device is probably gonna butcher it though. I wonder why the sound doesn't work. All right, let's get out of here. What else do we have? What is HPR08? Well, there's something from 2002 on here. I wonder how long this machine was used for. With that amount of dust, it must have been used for a long time. Let's go into the documents folder and see if we can figure that out. Well, I guess not. There's no documents on here. Let's 
see details. 2007? Somebody was still using this machine in 2007. <laughs> that is crazy. Okay, let's test that floppy drive out. And it works. And it sounds perfectly happy. Okay, how about the CD drive? Uh, didn't like that. Oh, just didn't press it hard enough, I guess. No, that thing's not happy. It doesn't even try to open, which means it probably has a perished belt. Let's try to force it open. Well, there's the belt. It does look like it's seen better days. Let's see if it tries to close. Nope. Okay, the motor is turning. So yeah, that belt is just too bad. Well, let's see if I have a replacement for it. Yeah, that thing has no traction. Let's get that thing off. Okay, here's a belt that might work. Yeah, that might do it. Let's see. Yeah, there it goes. Working great. Might as well wipe that disc tray out. It's pretty dusty. And before we get it back together, let's just make sure it spins up. And yep, sure does. So there's a good chance this drive works fine. Well, let's get it back together and see what it does. Okay, let's try this again. And it is working. AOL 7.0 seemed appropriate. Okay, let's get out of this. If I can, exit. Keep exiting. Alright, well that CD drive is saved. Now, let's drop down the DOS mode and check out that hard drive. Using good old scan disk. All right, no file system errors. Let's see what Surface Scan finds. I think we're gonna win. Yeah, that drive is clean. Now, as for case cleanup, it looks like it doesn't need much more than a wipe down. We just have these few scuffs here and there, and those might take a little scrubbing, so let's get those taken care of. And that takes care of that. Wow, I can't believe all this thing needed was some cleanup and a CD drive belt. This thing's an absolute survivor. I guess Packard belts were of higher quality than they get credit for. Let's hope that's true for the other two. Speaking of which, let's move on to the next system. And the next system is the Multimedia C115A, sporting an Intel Pentium 1, and an 8-speed CD-ROM drive. That looks like a Packard Bell original CD drive. They even got a little boastful on that sticker. Provides quick program and data access. That's the power of 8x. And here's a look around the back. See, we have the same exact port layout as the last system. I wouldn't be surprised if it was the same or similar motherboard. Maybe that's the reason for that weird tower design. Maybe that was just their way of utilizing their desktop boards in the tower format. I'd sure love to know. Looks like we have that same combo sound card slash dial-up modem. I wonder if it has OPL. And that sure looks like a completely undisturbed QA sticker to me. It just has to be. Those things never stick back on that perfectly. In fact, they're designed to make a giant mess when they're removed. So there's a good chance I'm going to be the first one to get into this thing since it left the Packard Bell factory. Yeah, that is absolutely an undisturbed sticker. Without a doubt. Well, it's disturbed now. And honestly, that does kind of hurt a little bit. But we gotta get inside this thing. Okay, let's get this thing open. And yeah, I'm seeing a lot of similarities to the first system. And that does appear to be the exact same model sound card slash dial-up modem. And that motherboard is also very similar looking. Though I don't recognize that hard drive right off the bat. It's not a quantum fireball. We'll have to check that thing out. And so far this machine is considerably cleaner than the first one. There's a lot less dust. Let's get that sound card modem out of there. And that is the exact same card. 
AZT2320 chipset. And super clean. And we do have some differences on this board. This one has an S3 Trio 64 providing video. And I definitely remember these two chips being populated on the other board. This one also has VRAM expansion sockets, whereas the other one had all four chips soldered on. Well, let's check out that Pentium 1. And that is one stuck heatsink. There we go. And that's a classic ceramic top Pentium 1. Kudos to Packer Bell for using actual thermal paste on these. So many people didn't back in the day. And that stuff is nasty and perished. Let's try to get that thing cleaned off. Now let's try to get that metal shim off. That thing is awfully sticky. There we go. Yeah, that's a classic. I'm just gonna leave that thing in there for now. Let's get all this stuff disconnected. And those look like the same eight megabyte RAM sticks that were in the last system, but we only get two in here. Let's check those out. I don't have that string of text in front of me right now, but I'm pretty sure this is the same module. It's the same manufacturer, same number of chips. So we should have 16 megs of RAM in this thing. And the other stick is exactly the same. And that CD-ROM is a Packard Bell original, manufactured October 1996. Now, in order to pull the drives on these systems, you have to pull this entire drive cage. Fortunately, that's really easy to do. You just have three screws you have to remove. One here, one here, and one that runs into the side here. So let's get those out. And once those are out, just grab hold of it, slide it back, and then just pull it out of there. Now let's get this riser out of here. And that thing's pretty clean. Very good. Well, let's see what kind of charge we have and what is most likely a Packard Bell original battery. 117 millivolts. <laughs> That's honestly more than I was expecting it to have. Well, let's get it replaced. Okay, I decided to pull the motherboard because this whole section is covered in some kind of weird scuzz. I don't think it's liquid damage because there's not a hint of corrosion anywhere, but there's just something bothering me about it. So let's get it cleaned up. First, let's get that CPU out. Now, I'm just gonna give this thing an IPA bath. Okay, now I feel better. And oddly enough, the backside of this motherboard looks brand new. So it's unlikely that was a liquid spill. I don't know, that's just weird. Yeah, that stuff is on the heatsink too. It just feels like some really particularly sticky dust. Okay, let's get that CPU back together. That thing still has residue on it. Okay, I guess it's just stained. Very odd. Oh well, it'll live. Let's not forget about the memory. And while I had everything out, I went ahead and straightened out this back panel. At least as much as I could. Some of that dirt is actually under this label. But at least I got that popped back in its clip. And just like the first system, the floppy drives a Mitsumi D359T5, except this time with a face. Let's get it cleaned up. And there's almost no dust in that thing at all. Very clean. And the hard drive is a Seagate Metalist, about 1.3 gigabytes. Obviously original to the system with that Packard Bell sticker there. Let's hope it makes us proud. And that's the same exact model power supply as the last system. We already know it's of acceptable quality, though this one is much cleaner. Let's go ahead and give it the test. Okay, same test conditions as before. Let's see how this one does. And this one is slightly higher on the 12 volt rail, but still perfectly acceptable. Let's move the bulb over to the five volt rail. And yeah, we're doing just fine. Let's just put that back. And we'll give this thing five minutes to bake. And that is time. This power supply is good. All right, everything is back together. So let's see what this thing does. Yeah. 
And we're already posting. And those are some happy hard drive sounds. And yep, of course we had a dead BIOS. Let's just continue. And we are loading Windows 95. Oh, that Seagate's nice and crunchy. That sounds even better than the Quantum Fireball. Ooh, somebody didn't shut down properly. Oh no, plug and pray. All right, we are in. Okay, we got complaints about links. And they have the disk defragmenter shortcut right on the desktop there. That's funny. This thing sounds like it needs a defrag. Sounds like the head's all over the place. Let's see how bad it is. Oh, they kept up with it. Kudos to them. Let's see what we have on here. There's a programs folder called Mom. Just me and my mom. What on earth could that be? I gotta open that up. And it's broken. Oh well. What else do we have? Kid Picks Studio? Haha, oh, not Kid Picks. Of course I gotta see this. I haven't used Kid Picks since I was a kid. Well, let's get in there. Wow. It has been so long. I remember you can make this thing do some pretty wacky stuff, like make some strange sounds. Well, I guess not in this version. We're grayed out. I don't even really remember how to use this. It's been so long. All right, let's get out of here. You know, I don't hear any sounds. Let's see what's going on there. This definitely seems like the original image. Yeah, we got a sound scheme. But no sound. Hmm, I also have no volume. Well, we have a sound driver. What is going on? Let's go into multimedia. Well, let's try selecting another device. Sound Galaxy playback seems legit. There we go. Aha, now we have sound. Apply that, now. Yeah, that's better. Okay, that takes care of that. What else do we have? Oh, maybe I shouldn't have turned those sounds on just yet. <laughs> what do we have in Disney Interactive? Escape. Escape from DeVille Manor. Seems like something that requires a CD. Ooh, what's in that Sierra folder? Master Cook Deluxe 4.0. Is that really like a cookbook or something? Ooh, that menu is doing some weird stuff. Let's see. Yeah, it sure is. It's like a digital recipe book. Well, that's cool. Let's get out of here. Let's see, what else? This was definitely a parent's computer. We got cooking stuff mixed in with all kinds of kids stuff. Let's see, what's in that Hasbro menu? Candyland. That definitely looks broken. Yep. Let's see, what is Edmark? Thinking things. That looks like it could be a rabbit hole, so I'm gonna avoid that. What is expert software? Bicycle totally cool card games. Yeah, I can't tell this was the 90s, can you? Let's open that up. Let's see what kind of card games they have. Run the program. Ooh, we get music too. Select game. Um, they really made it like a Microsoft Bob thing. Okay, so we either get league games or kids games. Well, let's see what league games are. This thing makes you do a lot of clicking. All right, all legit card games. Let's launch good old Solitaire with multiplayer. Somebody was trying to one up Windows Solitaire. Ah, oh, and it's broken. Oh well, let's get out of here. <laughs> what is Elf Bowl? Why do I very vaguely remember that? Aggressive solutions for internet and multimedia. Interesting. Let's get in there. Ugh. 
Oh, I remember this, or something like this. Oh, yeah, I wasn't supposed to go there. <laughs> I blame the input lag. All right, let's try to make this. Nope. Oh, now they're mocking me. Okay, we gotta see them get hit. Aha, there we go. How did it go through that one in the front? That was right in the middle. Okay, that's gonna be impossible. <laughs> oh, that's cool. <laughs> Let's get out of here. God, this is so 90s. And they got Netscape Communicator on here. Let's see if there's any history in there still. Okay, we won't be connecting to that. Yes, we know. Let's see if they have any bookmarks. Oh yeah, tons of bookmarks. <laughs> I wonder how many of these websites still exist. Let's see what's in their history. Yeah, we got some stuff in there. Well, it was being used up until the time of Google, at least. Now, let's see if we can find out just how long this machine was being used. Yes, we know. Uh-oh. What is Netscape doing? What is this down here? Quicken Background Download Manager. Okay. Let's go into the Documents folder and find the newest one. Okay, there are no documents. I could have sworn I saw some in that Documents menu. Yeah, there's tons of documents on here. So we got a date of 2002 on that one. Let's go back to the root of the drive and get some details. Okay, we're still up to 2002. Let's scroll past the directories. December 2002. That's already a pretty long life for this machine. Well, I've been poking all around and it looks like 1226-2002 is the winner. That's the newest one I can find. So yeah, this thing had a good long life. Speaking of life, let's see if that floppy drive has any. And it sure does. Sounds great too. Let's see if we have that kind of luck with the CD drive. It was a little slow to open, but it did open. Sounds a little cranky in there. And it did not spin up. I think that thing's had it. Well, since it's an original part, let's at least try to fix it. Okay, let's see what's going on with that thing. Okay, now it seems to want to spin up. Maybe it just needed to knock around a bit. Okay, well, while I'm in here, might as well change that belt. And the belt kits fail again. Not one of those is the right size. Fortunately, this belt is not too bad. It's not perished, it's just the wrong shape. We can sometimes restore that by boiling it, so I'm gonna give that a try. Okay, after a couple of minutes in boiling water, it's better, it's slightly more round than it was. That will just have to do. All right, that's better. Okay, that was not the only problem with this drive. This thing's acting weird. Now, seemingly at random, it sends the head all the way to the outer edge of the disk, and then it'll shoot the drive tray out really fast, and then take it back in very slowly. Let's see if I can get it to do it now. Okay, now it's gonna make me seem crazy. It was just doing that every time, and also the LED would get very dim. I think this drive has some bad electrolytic capacitors. That's really the best explanation for this weird behavior. And the board has these surface mount electrolytics everywhere. Though none of them seem to have leaked, but that doesn't mean they're not bad. And I definitely don't have enough of these on hand to go replacing them. We may just have to move on from this drive. And that drive isn't working at all. It's just dumbly blinking its light. Well, that's too bad. Okay, well, let's check out that hard drive then. That's 7% fragmented? I don't know, that doesn't look right to me. And we are good. 
Okay, this thing is pretty dirty, but that dirt looks like it's relatively easy to remove. Let's see. Yep, it's coming right off. Okay, well, it's not perfect, but I'll take it. Well, too bad about that CD-ROM drive. This thing would have otherwise been factory complete. I am absolutely certain no one ever removed that QA sticker before, but can't go wrong with the rest of the system. Another surprisingly decent quality machine. Let's move on to the next system. And the next machine is the Senura? I don't think that's a real word. This thing is absolutely filthy. I should probably go ahead and prepare myself for disappointment. Yeah, this thing was not stored properly. But despite all of that, it still has its Windows 95 badge. And this machine must be slightly older than the first one. See, we shunned the second USB port for a second serial port. And this one has a dedicated modem and sound card. They're not combined like the last two systems. We also have a NIC with both RJ45 and DB15. So that's interesting. Wonder if this thing was being used in a corporate environment. And looks like someone took a shortcut with removing that VGA connector. Let's see if I can get those out of there. Okay, that's one down. Well, at least they come out easy. Okay, time to find out if this gross nastiness extends to the inside of the machine. Okay, so far it's just a normal level of disgusting, but somebody got the hard drive. And they also took the hard drive caddy. That is just mean-spirited. And check out that label on that PCI slot. Reserved, not for user upgrades. Now why on earth would that be? Unless it just doesn't line up with the slots. Electrically, there should be no reason why it shouldn't work. Well, that's strange. And looks like that's not actually a sound card. It's just a breakout board that leads to the motherboard somewhere. That's an interesting way to do it. Okay, let's start pulling these cards, starting with the dial-up modem. And that's an Aztec card with a Texas Instruments chipset. Gotta be 56K. Very good. Now let's check that NIC. And it's a 3Com Etherlink 3 from 1996. Looks like a 10 megabit card. And I've always been curious about Ethernet over DB15. I've only ever used it in RJ45. I'm gonna have to play with that. ISA NICs are very nice to have on hand. Okay, now let's see what's going on here. Let's pull that cable. That looks suspiciously like the floppy cable. Well, that's a weird looking thing. You know, I thought it would be all traces. We got at least one active component on there. That is interesting. I guess the real brains of the operation are on the motherboard itself. And here's where the other end of that cable leads. And this thing uses DIMM RAM. So it must be newer than the first system. I thought it must have been older. Guess not. And there's the sound chip. That's a CS4237B-KQ. Okay, let's start getting stuff disconnected. Man, they made a real mess here. Let's snip this zip tie. And that's funny. The VRM has its own dedicated fan, and the heatsink's only about two thirds of the height of it. <laughs> that's funny. And there's something terrible going on with this front panel connector. I'm not exactly sure what. Sure, it looks like somebody violently removed it, and the leads that run to the faceplate are tucked up behind it. Looks like it was just carelessly removed. I guess they figured since it was e-waste, why be careful? They also neglected to put that screw back. Well, let's get that faceplate off of there. Ah, they were also careless with these clips up here. Two of them are broken. Okay, at least they didn't wreck the connector. Aha! I found the parts to those broken clips. Okay, let's get that riser out of there. Yeah, I seriously doubt there's something electrically different about this slot, but I have got to know why they have that on there. Maybe it's just a fitment thing. Yeah, and that thing's pretty clean. Now I can get that sound cable out. And I decided to just pull that whole motherboard. It's just easier. Okay, this is funny. There are actually two USB ports, but one of them is blocked off. Why on earth would they do it like that? I can't imagine this thing's USB controller only supporting one port. This thing is just so strange. And video is provided by an S3 Trio 64, and it has all of its VRAM soldered on. 
Okay, well, let's check out that Ram. And that stick is made by Hyundai. Yes, that Hyundai. They make cars, so why not Ram sticks? Let's check out the next one. Okay, I'm gonna guess based on that part number that this is a 16 meg stick. And clearly not a matched set. This one looks a bit older. That VRM fan cannot possibly be factory. It just looks like it does not belong there. Let's get it out of our way. It certainly looks like it's been on there for a while though. That thing's dusty. Okay, let's check out that CPU. Whoa, it's a Cyrix CPU. I was sure that was gonna be a Pentium. I wonder if that's factory. Aha, yeah, it sure is. The heatsink says Cyrix. Oh, that's interesting. Wonder what their reasoning behind that was. Probably cost. Let's clean that thing up. Okay, that's as clean as that's getting. I'm gonna leave it in there for now, because we have to remove this dust. Now let's see how dead that battery is. Wait, what? It's fully charged? This thing must have been maintained for a while. I wonder how long it was being used. But without the hard drive, we'll never know. Okay, let's check that fan noise. And it sounds terrible. That bearing definitely needs attention. Let's get all this dust out of here first. And that's better. Okay, let's oil that bearing. First by cutting into the label. Now let's get some oil in there. Now let's run it to work that in. Sounding better already. Now let's clean up our oil mess with IPA. And now we'll seal that up with Kapton tape. Ready for another 100,000 miles. And this heatsink has that same evil thermal compound on it. Now a few people have told me to try WD-40, so that's what we're gonna do. And that's been soaking for about a minute now. Let's see. Yeah, I don't know if WD-40 works against this stuff. No, that stuff just as fierce as ever. But I know what will definitely work. A fresh razor blade. Look at that, that's how embedded this stuff is into the metal. Oh, but the magic eraser sponge gets that out. Yeah, look at that. New trick unlocked. Okay, let's get that back together. Okay, now let's ram it. Okay, I guess we'll clean up that VRM fan, even though I'm about 70% sure it's not stock. Let's see what it sounds like. Okay, it sounds good. It just needs a cleaning. And that will do. Okay, now let's check out those drives. And that's basically the same floppy drive as the previous systems, except much dirtier. Although that's a D359T6, so they changed it up on us a little bit. Let's get it cleaned up. And yep, it's filthy. And those heads were a little dirty. Better go over them again. There, that's more like it. Yeah, this thing's kind of gross. I don't know what this is. Some kind of corrosion slash petrified grease. I don't know how corrosion would happen in the presence of grease. Let's make sure that lead screw is not seized. No, it's fine. And that CD-ROM drive is made by Light On. No manufacture date on it. Let's actually go ahead and bench test this thing since I haven't been having great luck with CD-ROM drives this week. Okay, do you turn on? Yes, you do. Sounds like there might be something in there. Let's see if it opens. Maybe not. Okay, I guess that thing's no good. Let's force it open. Oh, now you wanna fight. Okay, there's no disc in there. But man, that thing is dusty. Let's see if it closes now. Okay, something's scrubbing in there. Surely you'll open up now, right? Okay, it's just getting stuck. Let's open this thing up. 
Yeah, that belt has had it. Let's hope I have the right size. Okay, that's the closest one. It's a little bit tight though. Maybe it'll work. Let's see. Power on. Okay, yeah, it's not happy about that. Well, I don't think I have any better belts, so we may have to boil that old one. Okay, I found another one, though it's not quite the correct thickness. Let's see what it does. Once again. Okay, that's looking better. Let's see if it opens. Yep, sure does. It's doing exactly what it's supposed to do. Well, let's see if it'll spin a CD. And yep, looks like it accepted it. Okay, so this drive might work. I'm gonna go ahead and clean it up the rest of the way. I did notice this volume potentiometer is broken. It looks like it got whacked there. And it ain't quite right. Can't have it all, I guess. And that power supply is a slightly different model, but it still feels decent based on weight. Let's see if it makes us proud like the others. Well, let's find out, shall we? Uh, lost my light bulb. All right, no trouble so far. Let's bulb the five volt rail. And no trouble at all. Let's go back to 12. Now we'll let this thing run. And run it did for five whole minutes. Score three for light on power supplies. And I gotta say, I love the way they put the IDE and floppy cables in this neat little bundle. It makes it so convenient. System 1 was like that too. I hope whoever came up with that was handsomely rewarded. Even here in the future, I feel it. All right, it is time. Let's give it something to boot from. And we're already posting. These Packer Bells post fast. Oh, floppy drive's working. It doesn't sound great, though. But it did boot. Sounds like that spindle motor was a little funny. Now we can find out if that CD drive really does want to work. Okay, I think we're spinning. Let's see. And it works! Sounds like a high-speed drive, too. But I'm very curious to see if this thing reads CDRs. It probably does, since it's a high-speed drive. This might be a later addition to the system. Oh, I think it likes it. Let's see. And yes, it does. Okay, that's awesome. Oh, and here's something you never see anymore. This is the vertical switch, and that allows you to mount the CD drive on its side while still being able to put the disc in the tray. So let's engage that. And that holds spring pressure against the disc. So you push it against there, and then it butts up against these rubber bumpers. They sure had some clever tricks back then. Okay, now, I want to run speed sys on this thing. See what this Cyrix CPU is made of. That's a joke. Cyrix CPUs are not known for their performance. Hmm, we seem to be stuck. Stuck on read MSRs. Well, we may not be getting speed sys. Yeah, we are frozen. We're gonna have to reboot. Yeah, can't even control alt delete. Gonna have to hit it with a hard reboot. Let's try running speed sys without plug and play detection. I think that's forward slash SP. I don't even know if that's what its problem is. Nope, still hangs on read MSRs. Okay, well, I guess speed sys ain't happening. Well, I suppose I'll try to boot Canopix then. Oh, it looks like it wants to. Let's see. Well, maybe not. That CD drive is struggling. And it gave up. Okay, I checked the disk and it's definitely clean. Let's just try to reboot again. Okay, it got just a tiny bit further that time. Oh wait, there it goes. Now I know we're not gonna get KDE with only 48 megs of RAM. I just wanna see how far this thing will get. I've never seen Canopics run on a Cyrix CPU. And yeah, we know. We're not getting KDE. 
And no swap file either. And we made it to TWM, aka Tiny Window Manager. But we are fully running on a Cyrix CPU. <laughs> that is so cool. So first for me. I love how the vendor ID is Cyrix instead. Wonder if that's a Linux thing or if the actual CPU has that as its vendor ID. <laughs> that's funny. All right, let's shut this thing down. Thank you. Okay, it's time to start the 30 minutes of cleanup that this thing needs. I got my scrubbing arm ready, and I am definitely wearing gloves for this one. I don't know, this job might be too tough for old Windex. Let's see how it goes. Okay, it did better than I expected. However, this stuff down here, and presumably this stuff up here, it's not coming off as easily. Let's try the magic eraser. And yep, it's doing its magic. This is just a melamine sponge. Magic Eraser is just a brand name. All right, that worked out pretty well. There are some annoying little nicks here and there, but what are you gonna do? The thing was e-waste. Okay, let's do something about that face. Let's see if the remnants of my last remaining Magic Eraser has what it takes. Okay, that turned out fine. Save for the little bits of plastic damage here and there. Well, it's nice to see this thing overcome all that filth. It's actually in pretty good condition, though I get the feeling that it was probably stored in a damp environment. There is very minimal rust here and there, but luckily all the circuit boards are fine. And hey, can't go wrong with everything being functional. Now if only I had the hard drive caddy. But that's okay. Hard drives can be mounted elsewhere. Packard Bell always had a reputation for producing cheap and presumably unreliable systems, so these three definitely surprised me. You know what else surprises me? The amazing generosity of the fine people on Patreon. Thank you all so much for helping keep the lights on around here. And if you're new to the channel, I have quite a few of these videos now if you want to check those out. But that's all for this one. Thanks for watching.